Hi there, this is Unmay Shopee doing awesome and welcome to part 2 of matching subjects with background. In this part, we're going to create a colorful composite by matching a colorful subject and a background. In part 1, we created a monochrome composite. If you haven't checked that out, check it out right here. Creating a composite like this is very simple if we understand the concepts. We're going to break down the whole process for you and it's going to be a lot of fun. So without any further ado, let's get started. So here we are in Photoshop and if you want to download the photos and follow along, check the links in the description. So here we have both the subject and the background open as separate documents inside of Photoshop. And the first thing that we have to do, you already guessed that right, is selecting the subject. How do we select the subject? Again, as we discussed in part one, there are tons of ways of doing that. Go ahead and check out the links in the description of different ways of making a selection. In this case, it's going to be pretty easy. We can use the brand new feature called select subject in this case. So all we have to do, we have to select the quick selection tool and click on this button called select subject. Now, if you're using an earlier version of Photoshop, you might use the quick selection tool or any method. You can also use the pen tool. That's the most accurate way to do it. And there's also a tutorial on that. So this has made a pretty good selection. Now, once the selection is done, all you have to do, click on the mask button. So here's the mask button. Just click on that. So here we have just the subject. Now, what I would suggest you to do is to create a solid color adjustment layer. Click on the adjustment layer icon and choose solid color and you can choose anything. I'm going to choose black and put it behind it to see how well of a selection it has made. So clothes, it has done a pretty good selection here. It has left a little bit. Maybe I'm sure the head was not selected properly. See the hair is not well selected. So we can easily just make the selection better by using the pen tool. So in these areas, the selection is amazing we don't have to do a thing don't worry about that but outside of that we have to we might have to make it better so how do we do it we can use the pen tool right so come back to the subject layer okay it doesn't matter which layer you're in if you're using the pen tool that's a whole different thing you're using parts press p okay now all you have to do is to turn off the mask momentarily to do that hold the shift key and click on the mask it just turns off the mask now we are in the pen tool, select the pen tool or press the P key, zoom in quite a bit and let's do the hair again, do the whole head again. So just click, click and drag, click and drag. You don't have to create a perfect selection, just make sure the selection looks good and you stay inside of it. Okay, if you want to learn how to use the pen tool and master it, I would highly recommend that you check out this tutorial. Back to this one. So. Just click and drag, click and drag, okay? Just like that. And anytime you wanna make a sharp turn, you already know what to do. Hold the Alt key. I'm hoping you already know. Hold the Alt key and click on it. It breaks it. And then once you create another point, it takes a turn. It doesn't add a curve. Also, you can edit all the points later. That's one of the plus points of the pen tool. By holding the control or the command key, you can select the point and move it later after the fact. Isn't that so cool? You can also change the handles by holding the control or command and then move in the way you think it would be. Okay. So simply select the subject with the help of the pen tool. Just the head. Other areas, you don't have to go through the entire process because Select subject did a pretty good job over there. Anytime the line breaks, then you would click here again, the last point, and then continue. It links it up back again. Now when the hair comes, stay inside because we're going to be using channels to select the hair. Stay a little inside. Stay inside again. Make sure you stay inside. Okay, there we go. When it comes to selecting hard edges, nothing is better than pen tool. And this is the tool that I use all the time. I mean, it's so accurate, so clean. It is just great. Hold the Alt key or the Option key. Click here to break it. 
and then let's reach in right here and I can see that the selection has been done because the because her uh, shirt was selected properly but let's do a little extra selection right here and we're good to go now once you have that selection done just complete it finish it and click on the starting point it makes a selection now for security purposes to have a backup of this go to the paths tab if you cannot see the paths tab go to windows make sure paths is checked now here just rename it let's rename it head now this is saved anytime you create a new path this head will still be there if you don't rename it it will be deleted if you create another path so make sure it is saved as head now you can make a selection of it very easily by holding the control or command and clicking on the head thumbnail and there you have made a selection one another way is just select the head right click make selection feather zero we don't want any feather here all right let's turn on the mask back again by holding the shift key click on the mask to turn it back on so there are a couple of areas that were not selected as you can see so what we have to do take the brush and make sure the foreground color is white select the mask foreground color has to be white press X to toggle between the foreground and the background it's black and white X okay make the brush a little bigger and start just painting it fills in the areas It's a pretty good selection. We have to delete the areas which have been selected extra. Now invert the selection. We have selected inside of the head. Let's select everything but the head. Press Control Shift I, Command Shift I on a Mac, or simply go to Select and then Inverse. It does the same thing. Now we would take blank as the foreground color and delete the extra areas like so from here. Okay, make the brush softer. Okay, now let's delete the extra areas. Don't worry about the hair as of now. It's pretty good. Okay, Control or Command D. As you can see, so clean and amazing the selection is. We're going to make it smooth later. Don't worry about it. But let's do the hair first. Turn off the mask again. By holding the Shift key, clicking on the mask, it turns off the mask. Let's come back to channels. Now, see which channel has the most contrast between the hair and the background. So, RGB, red, green, and blue. Obviously, blue has the most contrast between the hair and the background. So, we would make a copy of the blue, drag it, and drop it over here. We have a blue copy. Press Ctrl or Command L to open up the levels. Now, make the hair as dark as possible without frying it up. Take the slider from the left to the right. If you go too much, it's going to fry up the hair. We don't want that to happen. So we will keep it somewhere around this value. It seems all right to me. As you can see, it shouldn't fry it all up. And make sure the background is completely white. It's already white. It's doing a pretty good job of keeping it white. Hit OK. Now, hold the Control R command. Click on the thumbnail of the blue copy. Okay, now it makes a selection of the white areas, not the black areas, but we want a selection of the black areas. So what do we do? We invert it again. Go to select, inverse, or press the shortcut Control Shift I or Command Shift I. Now let's come back to the layers. Let's turn on the mask by holding the Shift key. Click on the mask to turn it on. Click on the layer to come back to the layer and then take the brush and make sure the mask is selected with the white color this time just fill in these areas back in okay simple stuff very simple stuff see how nicely we have selected the hair here right that's why i asked you to leave a gap okay looks pretty good all right now press Ctrl or Command D to deselect that. At the corner it looks a little strange, so we're going to make the brush a little smaller and just paint on these areas a little bit. Now you can take your time to refine it. See, these areas look a little strange, so just paint in these areas. What you can also do, you can hold the Alt or Option and click on the mask to see which areas are left out. You can just fill in, fill in those areas and it looks pretty good over here we can fill this out we can fill this out as well 
Now, as you can see, the selection is very harsh here. So select the blur tool. Yes, select the blur tool. So right click here if you cannot see. And this is the blur tool. It's in the same group. Smudge, sharpen, blur. So select the blur. Strength, let's go 20-ish. And let's just blur the mask. We are blurring the mask, not the subject. Okay, let's blur it a little bit. Okay, here as well. Let's blur it because it looks so very sharp. You don't have to do the hair because that has been selected properly. Let's do it over here. Just blur it a little bit so that it doesn't look that sharp and composited. You might want to do it in the dress as well. Not required so much, but here on the dress, but it does make it much more natural if you're very picky. All right, there you go. Hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on the mask again. So here we have a perfect selection. So now what we have to do, just turn it off or do whatever you want. Just delete it. Okay, make sure you save this as a PSD just for security. If you want to insert it in some other backgrounds or if you want to do something else with it. So save this as a PSD. I'm going to go to file, save as and save that as a PSD subject dot PSD. Let's save it. Hit OK. You might need it later. Now, all we have to do here is to drag the subject layer. Okay, and drop it onto the background as easy as that. Now, if you cannot do it, you can also do this. Let me go ahead and delete that. Just like the previous tutorial, we can also select the layer, press Control or Command C to copy it and come back to the background, press Control or Command V. Now, once we do that, I would highly suggest that we convert the subject layer into a smart object so that whatever effect or filter that we apply, the value of that filter or effects can be modified after the fact. Okay, it's interesting, which means that it can be modified anytime, even after applying it, even after applying tons of layers after it. It's cool. All right, so let's name it subject and right click convert to smart object. Sorry about the background noise, by the way. Now press Control or Command T and then hold the Shift key and make it smaller. Bring it at the top. You can also hold the Shift key and the Alt key together and make it smaller from the center. There we go. I like the size. What I'm going to do, I'm going to right click and flip it horizontally. All right. And we're going to keep it right there. Okay. Now let's just talk about the positions. Does it look all right? Well, um, look at the level of the ground. It's just too high. For her to be able to stand in that kind of level of the ground, she might be dipping her leg into the ground. It, it's just not possible. So what we have to do, come back to the background and just unlock it. Click on the lock to unlock it. And now let's move the background a little down like that. Now it's looking as if she's standing right there. And there's a gap. What do we do? Crop it out. Press C. Open up the crop tool. Make sure you clear everything out and then crop it to the bottom. Now we yeah, just crop it. All right. Now what we have to do, it's time for us to match the subject to that of the background. Let's move her a little bit to the right. It's still the crop tool. We have to move back to the move tool. Don't crop. Okay. Move it to a little bit right. There we go. Now, how do we match it? Simple. Let's go ahead and add some curves adjustment layers. Click on the adjustment layer icon and we're going to choose curves. Okay. First of all, let's match the brightness. So let's, we can name it brightness and let's match it. I want this bright area to be a little darker. So I'm going to choose the hand tool and click here and drag it down. Simple. But it's also affecting the background. We don't want that. Click on this button to create a clipping mask so that it just affects the subject. Okay. So with the hand tool selected, this one, okay, click and drag it down. Looks interesting, right? Also, one more tip, one thing that you can do, you can create a hue saturation adjustment layer. Click on the adjustment layer icon and choose hue saturation and take away the saturation all the way to the left to see just black and white. And that makes it easier for us to match the brightness. 
the color doesn't distract us. Let's come back to the curves, the brightness. Just click on the symbol to bring up the properties and open up the hand tool again. I want to make this area a little brighter. Okay, and let's zoom in quite a bit. And I want to make the super dark areas like these a little darker. So let me just go ahead and pull it down like that a little bit. Now we are talking something. All right, there we go. It's matching. Is it matching? I don't know. Let me know. I'll make the brights a little more darker. Okay, something like that. That's pretty much looking great. So let's have a look at the before and after. So here's the before, not matching at all. Here's the after. We are matching a little bit. So I'm gonna make the brights a little brighter. There we go. It's pretty good. It's not very bad. It's it's pretty good. We can adjust it anytime we like it. Okay, there we go. It's matching. Now all we have to do just turn off the hue saturation. Look at how it does. But then again, what you what we have done is when we controlled the brightness. I deleted the hue saturation by the way. When we controlled the brightness, it also increased the saturation of this. The color is totally increased. We don't want that. So let's open up a hue saturation adjustment layer. Okay. And clip it. Hold the Alt key or the Option key. Click on the line between these two to clip it. Or let's go back. You can also click on this button as we did with the curves. Now, let's simply take down the saturation. It's too much. Just a little bit of it. Like that. Minus 30 ish. It's fine. Let's keep it minus 30. We can always change that later and we will be changing that later. Now let's work with the color. Create one more curves adjustment layer and create a clipping mask of this one as well. Now let's do the color. In the highlights, what do you think the color should be? It should be a little bluish because see, the sky is blue, the road is, a road is a little bluish. So let's choose blue and increase it in the highlights. So select the hand tool. Click on this area, just a little bit blue, not too much, just a touch right in there, just like that. And from the shadows, let's try taking away the blues. Does it look okay? No, it doesn't. Just keep the blue at that. It's, it's great. Let's go to greens. Does decreasing the green help or increasing the green help? None of that help. Leave it for now. Let's go to reds. Let's try to decrease, it, try to decrease the red a little bit. In the highlights a little bit just a tad bit and in the shadows let's increase the red as it is so let's have a look at the before and after so here's the before let's zoom out and here's the after it's pretty much a little bit matching but then again something is missing something is missing let's try playing with the red a little bit and let's go to the blues Let's control that. I think it's pretty good. If you want to match even more, here's what I would suggest you to do. Get the background. Get the background and make a copy of the background. Okay. Go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And if you're wondering how did I make a copy, just simply press control or command J to make a copy of that layer. Then blur it all the way so that it just retains the colors. If I make it 1000, it's not pretty good. Let's make it 800 something. That is great. It looks pretty great. Now hit OK. Now all you have to do, just bring it at the top. Okay, now once the blur is applied, bring it at the top. Create a clipping mask by holding the Alt key or the Option key. Click on the line between these two very simply. So do that. Now change the blend mode from normal to color. You want to just affect the color. There you go. It's not matching so much, so decrease the opacity and keep on increasing it slowly and gradually so that it matches. So I'm going to keep it at around 15-ish. Let's keep it 15. And there you go. At this point, I want to go back to hue saturation and increase the saturation a little bit just like that. And there we go. As you can see, it's matching so well. Now, what I would also suggest you to do is let's add a background blur to this. Why not? Let's do it. Make a copy of the background layer again and also convert this layer to a smart object as well. Go to filter, convert for smart filters. Two ways of converting this to a smart object, both do the same thing. Hit OK. Also, one other way is right click and click on 
convert to smart object both do exactly the same thing okay now let's add some blur to it go to filter blur gallery let's choose tilt shift okay zoom out a little bit and this is the tilt shift blur see these two lines bold lines anything inside of these lines is not going to be applied with blur at this point at this line the blur is zero at this dotted line the blur is whatever the value there is 15 so it goes from 0 to 15 gradually and after that it's all 15 so if you increase it let me just illustrate that 30 see at this point no blur 0 blur gradually increases to 30 at this point and after that it's 30 so what are we gonna do we're gonna keep it down here because where she would be standing we want that area to be in focus and we're going to blur it gradually and we're going to keep the blur not so much let's keep it 30 ish let's see how 30 sounds i'm sorry about the sound let's just cancel the sound okay there you go now let's add one more point here because we also want the blur to gradually go from this to that and we'll add one more there according to the walls we'll add one more okay so let's make it straight first of all it's bent okay now let's create one more point over here let's rotate that and you can hold the shift key to rotate it in 15 degree angles 45 I think it's 15 okay so uh, let's do the same with this side of the wall as well 30 is fine okay let's do it for this area as well let's create one more point rotate it like that let me just rotate that okay looks pretty good move it to the left extend it 30 is fine for this area as well okay looks pretty good once you're satisfied with it hit okay looks nice to me now the blur is being applied just a normal general blur and anytime you want to make a change you already know what to do go to blur gallery and then you can change whatever you want here I'm gonna hit cancel that's why we converted that to a smart object now still you know what things are not matching I don't know what it is it's it's just not matching you know what it is because as you can see she is very sharp and at the edge there are these fringes that we need to take care of it's it's very annoying so how can we do that first of all let's make her a little soft select the subject let's apply some Gaussian blur to it go to filter blur and then Gaussian blur okay not so much not this high that she becomes invisible no not th that high now crazy thing happens when you apply the blur the edges also become pretty good so let's see how does 3.7 look 3.7 is great let's go for it let's go for 3.7 or let's go for 4 we can change the value later keep in mind but we want the eyes and everything else to be sharp how do we make them sharp simple when you apply a filter to a smart object see it applies a smart filter if you cannot see it just click on this arrow to see it and smart filters do come with a mask so select the mask take the brush make sure it's big make sure the foreground color is black and opacity and flow at 100 and let's just start making the eyes and everything else sharp like that it's just like applying a kind of shallow depth of field effect isn't that interesting there we go okay these area would be in blur because they're extending forward there we go we actually sharpen the other area let's paint in white in this to match it there we go it looks pretty good have a look it looks much more matched in now, if you think the hair is not looking great you can also paint in a little bit of it so what you can do you can create a brand new layer okay apply as just clip it down first of all let's go back to the smart filters and I want to Get some details back in here paint in black in these areas get some details back in right there okay looks pretty cool all right looks great now what we can do we can get back to this layer and we can take the clone stamp tool just just sample from it and paint on the outside to make sure that just sample and make sure you're sampling from current and below that's why I was wondering why it's not sampling current and below just sample from it 
and paint on the outside to kind of make sure that the outside looks good. You don't have that halo, right? So simply we can do the same over here. The edge was looking a little funny. Don't worry about that. This side looks fine, not bad. So there we go. That's how you very easily match it. Now, after you do all of that, at the end, I would highly suggest that we apply an effect that makes the subject and the background one. We will apply a global effect both to the subject and the background. Okay. So it can be anything. I'm going to go ahead and apply a gradient map. What about it? So let's apply a gradient map. So click on the adjustment layer icon and choose gradient map. And we can apply any gradient map. This default looks amazing as well. Just click here once. And if you cannot see all of these presets, all you have to do, let's just reset it first. So if this is what you see, all you have to do, click on this gear icon and choose photographic toning. Hit OK. Okay. And then you can select a ton of presets available. What you can also do, hit OK and change the blend mode of this one to soft light. Isn't that amazing? Now let's get back to the presets. Just click here once to the properties of the gradient map and you can try in different presets that you like. See which one you like. This one, that one, whatever you like. So we are gonna choose this one probably or maybe this one. Let's choose this one. Hit OK. And now we don't want it on the dark areas. We just wanted it on the bright areas because dark areas are becoming too dark. So double click on the right hand side of the layer. We're going to use blend if to do it. Take this effect away from the dark areas by taking the slider of the underlying layer from left to right. But it's very harsh. Hold the alt key or the option key. Click on the slider. Break it down like that. Let's take this to the left. It looks much more realistic and let's have a look. Here's the before, here's the after. Looks really amazing. Also what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a curves and add some punch to the shadows like that and bring the highlights and the midtones back like that. I'm sorry about the background noise. It's sometimes pretty disturbing to me as well. Okay, looks pretty good. Let's decrease the opacity. It's too much. Let's apply a little bit of it. And at the end, what I think I would apply a hue saturation again. It's too saturated. And then let's decrease the saturation a little bit. Okay, looks good. And let's apply a vignette. So create. Why does that appear again and again? Anyway, let's create a levels adjustment layer and take this slider from the right to the left, just like so. Okay, now once you do take it, Make sure the mask is selected, take the brush, make sure you make it big, make sure you make it hard. The foreground color has to be black. And then make sure the opacity and flow is 100 and dab on her face. Control or Command T and then adjust it the way you like it, probably this way. Okay, hit enter. Now let's select the mask, open up the mask properties. If you cannot see the properties, go to Windows and then make sure properties is selected. You would see the properties. And inside of the property, simply increase the feather of the mask. Like that. Interesting. Now once that is done, just you can also move it. With the move tool, you can just move this thing right here. It's interesting. Let's just decrease the opacity. It's too much again. If I turn off the hue saturation. Yeah, hue saturation was not required there. Okay, now I want you to take a break and look at the image after two or three hours and then you would see something which is missing or something that you need to do. And that's why we have created this composite in such a way that everything can be edited after the fact. For example, if you think the saturation is too less for the subject, you can come back to this one and open up the properties by double clicking on here and you can decrease it or you can increase it. Do whatever you want. I would make it 20 minus 24 ish and there you go. That's how to create a colorful composite and match the subject with the background. And here is the final result. I played with it a little bit and this is the final result. Time for a quick recap. Make sure both the subject and the background is opened up in Photoshop as separate documents. Now select the subject document. Make a selection of the subject using any method that deems fit for the subject and its original background. Okay, so you would select a perfect method to make a selection, then you would make a selection of the subject. Now create a mask, click on the mask button. You can also refine the selection once you create a mask. Then what you have to do, 
drag the subject layer and paste it onto the background okay or just copy and paste the subject layer onto the background do not forget to convert that into a smart object then we can use curves hue saturation and also make a copy of the background layer blur it out and apply it as a clipping mask and change the blend mode to color to match the subject to that of the background just keep in mind the major stuff curves and hue saturation these really help and at the end apply an effect which makes both the background and the subject one come together you can also apply vignettes and stuff there are lots of things that you can do just make sure that you first match the brightness then match the color okay to match the brightness you would use curves to match the color you can also use curves and add a hue saturation to increase or decrease the saturation that's all for this video i hope this video helped you and if it did make sure to give us a like and also do not forget to subscribe and not just subscribe ring the bell so that you don't miss any other future tips tricks and tutorials thank you so much for watching and i would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people to support this channel on patreon and helping keep pics imperfect free for everybody forever thank you so much for all the help and all the support i really appreciate that guys i'll see you guys in my next one till then stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating